Mixing herbs can increase the effectiveness of herbs. But what herbs should you mix? How should you mix these herbs? And what key information should you be mindful of? Find all of that out along with four simple rules of mixing herbs all in this video. If you're ready, let's go. This video mainly relates to teas and it can be applied to like powders that you might put in your smoothies, juices or drinking water. As you know, there are many other ways to consume herbs. Some of these other ways to consume herbs include tinctures, oil infusions, compressors, syrups and honeys, capsules, steam inhalations and some herbs can actually be smoked. Well, there are quite a few smokable herbs. Consuming herbs as teas is one of the easiest ways to consume herbs and mix herbs together. And this is one of my go-to methods. The proper terms for these methods are infusions and decoctions. I'll further break down these definitions towards the end of this video. I want to point out that herbalism for the everyday person is a lot simpler than we think. I think as humans we have a tendency to overcomplicate things or fear what we don't fully understand. For example, when cooking, a lot of us use mixed herbs. Most of us will use curry powder, turmeric powder and other herbs in the pot and we do this without thinking too much. But when it comes to other herbs and more complicated herbs or more herbs we're not familiar with, we tend to overthink. So I really do hope this video will change your perception and view on herbs and make it more manageable in terms of mixing them together. The only people who need to be more mindful about herb mixing are a specific set of people. These people include if you have a pre-existing condition, if you're currently taking a form of medication, if you have a surgery pending, if you're pregnant trying to get pregnant, or you are breastfeeding, if you have liver or kidney disease, if you're young or elderly, or if you have a pre-existing allergy to certain plant species. Apart from that, it's pretty safe and fair to experiment with herbs and herb mixing. So when it comes to herbalism as a beginner, the world is truly your oyster. So before we get into some rules of combining herbs, let's go over some four quick benefits of combining herbs together. The first benefit of combining herbs is that it can increase potency potential. Most herbs are beneficial on their own. For example, adding turmeric to hot water will give you a wide array of benefits and these include immune system benefits. But adding turmeric to your herbal blend, that is adding it with other herbs, will automatically boost its benefits. For example, today if you chose to have some ginkgo tea, ginkgo tea already has studies linking it to brain health but adding in some turmeric, another herb noted for its brain health benefits as well as its liver function benefits, this automatically increases the potency of the tea that you're consuming. The second benefit of combining herbs is its complementary benefits. Nettle and sea moss are both good sources of iron, but some nutrients are complementary or they relate to one another. And this is in terms of absorption. This means that the body requires one in order to utilize the other. For example, vitamin C helps with iron absorption. Choline helps with B vitamins and folates. Calcium relates to magnesium and vitamin C. These are just a few examples. So having nutrients that relate to one another in the same tea or herbal blend increases the benefits you can gain from drinking that same tea. And this is the reason why a lot of people tend to put some lime juice or some lemon juice, some ginger or some turmeric into their herbal blends. Some other people put some black pepper or they even put some fats as this offers some complementary benefits. The third benefit of combining herbs is the holistic benefits. Herbal medicine takes an holistic approach. The aim of herbal compounding is not only to ease the symptoms but also help treat the underlying issue. So in one herbal blend, one herb might have therapeutic benefits that target inflammation caused by a disease whilst the other herb can help treat the underlying issue. For example, somebody with some digestion issues may receive a herbal blend. In this herbal blend, one herb may help in aiding digestion and bowel movements, whilst another herb might also aid in reducing inflammation in the digestive tract, thus taking a holistic approach. And this is one of the key benefits of compounding or mixing herbs together. The fourth benefit of combining herbs is absorption and bioavailability benefits. It's said that some herbs can increase the bioavailability and absorption of other herbs. For example, sarsaparilla is thought to increase the bioavailability and absorption of other herbs and this is due to the saponins found in sarsaparilla. And there are other benefits of mixing herbs and some of these benefits include taste benefits. As you may know, some herbs 
taste different. Cat's claw on one hand tends to be a bit more bitter, whilst hibiscus tea and burdock tea tend to be a bit more sweet tasting. Combining herbs allows you to get the taste to your liking and it's a bit more fun to experiment with. When it comes to herb combining, it really does depend on what school of thought you want to go with. For example, in traditional Chinese medicine, the taste of the herb is said to give clues about the herb's uses. Aromatic taste in herbs often helps settle the digestive tracts, whilst on the other hand, bitters stimulate it. There are five tastes to be considered in traditional Chinese medicine. These are sourness, saltiness, sweetness, pungentness, and bitterness. I'm going to dive more into traditional Chinese medicine soon, especially when it comes to herb combinations. For example, is that herbal blend a single effect herbal blend or a mutual enhancement herbal blend? If this is something you want to see in the series, be sure to like, be sure to comment. This will form part one of my Understanding Herbs series. I really do hope you like it. So, there is no real consensus in rules for herb mixing or creating herbal blends. You are free to experiment. But now, I'm going to discuss four general rules, four general things to consider when mixing herbs and creating herbal blends. This is not a comprehensive list and if you buy pre-made herbal blends, these rules may not apply. But in my opinion, this is some good information to know and it can potentially help you, especially for those who are a bit more cautious when it comes to mixing herbs together. So without further ado, let's get into my four quick rules on herb mixing. The first rule is the single herb introduction rule. This rule is mainly for those who are slightly more conscious or generally more sensitive to new stuff. So for you guys, when creating a herbal blend, it's good to know that you can tolerate each herb in that herbal blend or in that herb mix. And the best way to do this is to have each herb by itself for a small period of time and see how your body reacts. Some people are generally just more sensitive. So introducing four herbs at a time into a herbal blend and trying that may lead to unwanted effects for these individuals. And in this situation, you might not know which of the herb is causing the potential issue. And that's why it's good to just introduce one by one for a short period of time, seeing how your body reacts, and then you can move on to combining two or three of these herbs together. And you might wanna do this for its taste, benefits or potential interactions. Just something to really consider if you're new to the game, you're a bit more sensitive or you're just being a bit more cautious. The second rule is the rule of low dosage. The typical tea bag on the market contains between 1.4 and 1.8 grams of dry tea. And I say this because this is a typical good dose to start your herbal mixing with. Once you mix your herbs together, you can start off your low dose with one or two tea bags per cup up to three times a day. And this is a good introductory dose in my opinion. And 1.4 to 1.8 grams happens to be around a teaspoon of dry herbs. So start very light and then you can go from there. In this teaspoon or two teaspoons, you can do it. If it's two herbs, you can do it 50-50 or 33.3, so three herbs in equal parts. Or you can divide it or change it based on its potential benefits or even the cost of the herb and the potency. For example, herbs like Panax Ginseng tend to cost a little bit more, so you might wanna use less in your herbal blend, and other herbs might be slightly cheap, so you might wanna use more. Adjust it to your potential preference, whatever ratios you choose to use, but it's a good idea once you've finished that, just to start a bit lower with one or two tea bags worth up to three times a day, seeing how your body reacts. And after a while, you can actually thus increase the dosage. The third rule of herb mixing is understanding differences. And what I mean by understanding differences is that understand different parts of the plant can be prepared differently for optimal absorption. For example, leaves and flowers are more delicate these tend to be easily added to teas, whereas tougher parts of the plants like the roots and the box need to be heated for a bit longer. And this is the main difference between infusions and decoctions. For me personally, for the first two years of me using teas and herbal blends, I was only consuming my herbs in two ways. One is teas, so that is the infusions, and other is decoctions where I was heating it up in a pot for slightly longer. As a beginner, it doesn't really make much difference for you. Ease of use might be your key thing to start with so you can focus on infusions but it's good to be mindful of what's best for each part of the plant so when it comes to herb mixing some people mix different parts of the plants together and some people don't but it's 
good to be mindful of the differences in how they're best prepared. So if you mix the bark roots and leaves together to create a deep decoction, that is if you boil it in the pan for about 20 minutes. Just understand that the leaves are more delicate so they need less time. So in that 20 minutes, the leaves might be more potent in the herbal mix as it doesn't need to be simmered for that long. The fourth rule is to experiment. There are no set rules when it comes to herb mixing and herb combining. Remember, there are many schools of thoughts when it comes to herbs and herbalism, and most of these schools of thoughts are aligned with healing. On this channel, we're here as a preventative measure. We're here to optimize wellness. We're here to just live our daily lives to the best. So for you guys, the world is your oyster. You can add herbs as part of your daily routine just to optimize life, but make sure you have fun with it. There's a big rush, and I love it right now, of returning to nature, returning to herbs. Herb searches are going up. Different herb name searches are going up. A lot of people are buying sea moss and other herbs. This is a big blessing. As long as you're working with relatively safe herbs, and these are herbs that I tend to talk about on this channel and in my book, you will be fine. But it's just good to be mindful. So when you buy a herbal blend or when you prepare herbs, with each herb in your herbal blend, ask yourself these four questions. For one, is this herb safe? For two, does it work? For three, what dosage works? And you might want to do a bit more research when it comes to dose because as I said, each person is slightly different. And on top of that, what part of the plant work? Is it the root? Is it the leaf? Is it the stem? And ensuring that you're buying the right herb for whatever goal you're trying to achieve. And after that, if you have no underlying issues, you're free to experiment. Have fun, but always do your own research and be mindful. Some herbs can have some side effects. If it doesn't feel right, stop using it there's no pressure everybody reacts to herbs differently as we are all individuals i hope this video has helped relax your mind when it comes to seeing herbs and combining herbs together a lot of us when we cook we combine about six herbs and some of our everyday herbs are powerful parsley is powerful coriander is powerful thyme is powerful but we have no issues mixing those together so just be very very mindful be relaxed and just have fun with it if you want to learn more about herbs click on my face and get my herb guide and before you go check out these two videos right here and right here it's your brother paul otote certified nutritionist herbalist and i'll see you guys on the next one peace